I was glad when they said let us go into the house. Amen. 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 The Lord. That's been my desire for many, many years. And I like the house of the Lord. When we worship the Lord. And I like His friendship. I like it. the fellowship. I like His Holy Spirit. I like to laugh together and cry together and help one another. We all need one another. They're my superheroes. Uh, we all need Jesus Christ most of all. None of us can make it without Him. And why would I have a desire to go without Him? Why would I have a desire to... Uh, use my own strength and ability to preach his word when I have his strength and his will to help me. Why would I want to preach something on my own when I can be inspired by the Lord? Amen. It really doesn't make any sense. Would my message be better than the inspiration of the Lord? <laughs> of course not. Do I need his help every day? Of course. You do. Does that make me weak? No, it makes me strong. It makes me intelligent. <laughs> makes me love him, makes me appreciate him. That's right. And uh, just appreciate the Lord. Beautiful saying. Amen. Beautiful saying. And just uh, I, every time I pray, I thank the Lord for my friends. Almost every time I pray, especially in the house of the Lord, thank the Lord for my friends. And I do that also usually add that they took their time to pray for me, that I may be reminded to take my time and pray for them. That's right. As I was going to say a while ago, we all need one another. Certainly do. Brother Hugh, Hubert Woods would finish that by saying, even having, even having one another won't always be easy. He didn't say it'd be easy, but he did say, I'll go with you all the way, even on to the end of the world. The only Lord can give you joy in trials. Yes, sir. Only the Lord can give you happiness when things go wrong. And in fact, that's one of the attributes of God. He can give you peace when there's no reason in the world to have peace. He said, my peace, I leave with you. We have the possibility of having the peace that Jesus Christ has. He said, my peace I live with you. And he talked about peace not as the world give, but give I unto you. We have the peace against all understanding. He can give us peace. When everything says we shouldn't have peace, we can still have peace because of Jesus Christ. And it's the greatest time that would be the worst time when we're passing on, most people don't really have, I'm going to use the word privilege, annoying when they're passing on. Uh, they go into a coma or they maybe for days or a lot of times. Some do have the privilege, and I've been to the hospital, where they have the privilege, as a Christian, they had the privilege to know they was passing on and was very close. And I got to hear them testify about the goodness of God. Amen. Only God can give that peace. Absolutely. That passes all understanding. You can have that peace when you see them leave. Only God can give that peace that passes all understanding. Book of Matthew, fourth chapter. Book of Matthew, the fourth chapter. Beginning at verse 12. Matthew 4, beginning at verse 12. Lord, we're finishing out uh, the chapter. Now when Jesus had heard that John was cast into prison, he departed on to Galilee. And leaving, leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelt in Capernaum, which is up on the sea coast, in the border of Capula and Naphtalim, that, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken, he says, the prophet saying, The land of the Zebulun, and the land of Nephthalim by the way of the sea beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. The people which sat in darkness saw great light. And to them that sat in the region of the shadow of death, light is sprung up. From that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And Jesus 
Walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brethren, Simon called Peter and Andrew his brother, cast in a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And he saith unto them, Follow me, and I'll make you fishers of men. And they straightway left their nets and followed him. And going on from this, he saw other two brethren, James, the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, in a ship with Zebedee, their father mending their nets, and he called them. And they immediately left the ship and their father and followed him. <coughs> and Jesus went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogue and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. Yep. And his fame went throughout all Syria. And they brought unto him all sick people that were taken with dire diseases and torments. Those which were possessed with devils, and those which were lunatic, and those which had palsy, and he healed them. And they followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee, and from Decapolis, and from Jerusalem, and from Judea, and from Yon, Jordan. I'm going to go read. I'm going to read the first two verses of chapter five. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set. The disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, You may be seated. Let us pray. <coughs> Lord, we thank you for your love and your mercy. Thank you, Lord, for what's been a wonderful evening in the house of God. Lord, our hearts were blessed in song and in prayer. And God in testimonies. And now, God, we come to this part of the service and the message. And God, as always, we ask you may anoint. First of all, Lord, we always need a physical anointing that we may preach the Word of God and the strength of the flesh. But above all of that, God, we ask that you anoint spiritually. May you preach thy word in the power of the Spirit, tying together the loose end and filling the void. We leave because of our inability to let thy word go out freely. Lord, let us give what you've given us to the best of our abilities. And God, you fill in where we leave, as I said, God, and you help where we leave off. And God, that the message may be for instructions, for help, for challenges, for callings, whatever it may be, God, that it may fulfill every need. So we thank you, we love you. Apply the message to our heart and ask you for thy anointing. In thy name we pray, dear Jesus. Amen. Amen. Out of this verse 25, and there followed him great multitudes of people from Galilee, from Decapolis, and from Jerusalem, from Judea, and from beyond Jordan. Quite a region for that day and age. Mm -hmm. We can understand Egypt in this day and age, and we all on social media, we go in our cars and we come from Parkinburg or from uh, Gallipolis or, or from Huntington or from uh, Clay or from Clinton and went to Charleston because there was somebody there that could heal you. If we knew there was somebody in this day and age and all the medicine and all the abilities that we have compared to just uh, 20 or 30 or 40 years ago, heart surgery hasn't been around very long. Transplanting hasn't been around very long. Operation that they can do on the bike and on the brain and on a different thing has not been around very long. Most of it has come about in my lifetime. The advancements of these type of surgeries has been in my lifetime. From the open heart surgery to the first ones, to the transplants, the artificial heart, artificial lung, all of this has come about in my lifetime. So we see the advancement. But yet, with all those advancements, if someone announced in church or not, a church or not, a come see a man, a man that when you see him and he prays, you are healed from your disease. Amen. It would be an impossibility to get all the people that would want to come. Yeah, absolutely. But yet, when we stand in the pulpits come on, come of the on. little country churches, and we say, come, see a man. Come on. They're not filled. 
when we read in the Bible every day, come see a man that can do all these things. Mm -hmm. Yet, we don't take it to heart. So, yes. Yes. Amen. why don't we preach on is having a need and finding Jesus. Having a need and finding Jesus. And I'm going to start off with the story. I gave this and, and just... And I, just like I was going to say, I suppose by now everyone here tonight has heard this story uh, that the man was overtaken by floodwaters and he couldn't understand why God would allow this to happen. Probably everybody here, but I'm going to tell it anyway. I'm going to tell it anyway. Everybody know that story even before I get into it? Mm -hmm. Most people know it, but we're going to tell it anyway. Because I think it's a good example. I preached it a while back and I taught last night at Reamer on the Bible, on the Bible study. And part of the thing I said, we all know the right answers. Mm -hmm. I'm teaching the next two months on growth. And it's Tower Growth. Who needs it? Just to, so you can interpret that. And we all know the right answer. If I pass up the test, every one of us can get all those answers 100% right. I also know what makes me skinnier. I also know what makes my sugar stay in more control. I also know what we make is healthier exercise. I know all the right answers. Guess what? <laughs> Doing the, the next thing. Amen. So we know the right answers. Amen. Of all the Bible things, we know the right answer. Of course, I want to grow. Of course, I want to get healthier. Of course. Of course. <laughs> so there was a man. It's to go over a story in case you haven't heard of. That was awakened. You can tell it in different ways. But awakened by a loud knock. At his door in the middle of the night or in the early morning hour, he wake up by a loud knock and he went to the door and there's a policeman and the policeman is saying, look, all the rain, the water are coming out of the banks and we're afraid the house will flood. Come with us. And the man said, no, the Lord will take care of me. You go back in a little bit, the water's come up and then a fireman come and come in the boat. And they come and knock, and the water is now coming up and the door. I close it. He said, Come, get in the boat and be rescued. He said, No, the Lord will take care of me. A little bit later, the flood water keeps coming. He goes to the roof of the house. The flood water is all around the house. They send the helicopter. He yelled back, No, the Lord is going to take care of me. The flood takes the house away, he dies. <laughs> he goes and says, Lord, I thought you was going to take care of me. He said, I sent a policeman, a farmer, and a helicopter. <laughs> and you refused. And that sounds funny, but it's a good illustration. Amen. We sometimes do not use what the Lord provides. Hey, the Lord, the book of James will put it this way. And we're studying James in the Sunday school lesson. But the book of James will put it this way. You see your brother and sister in daily, a destiny of daily food. Amen. And clothing, you say unto him, be warm, be filled. Notwithstanding, you give him not those same which he has, or which he has me. What does it profit him? Amen. If you seem to hunger, you say, hey, Clarence, I'll pray for you. Didn't help you a bit. I'd rather say, hey, Clarence, here's your T bone steak. Hey, yeah. <laughs> now, I'm trying to get that thing broken about where you always want to feed us chicken. There's a reason for that. Chicken is cheap. <laughs> I know why you want to give us chicken. It's not that we love it so much. It's 79 cents a pound. Steak, $8 a pound. What do you think you want to eat? So sometimes, the old folks, you say, we got to put lights on our prayers. Amen. We all know what's needed. We all need what we need to do. We all know. And when we need Jesus, these people saw what He can do. Amen. It was a time in which aspirin could be a miracle drug. Mm -hmm. Come on. A tooth extraction would have saved a lot of lives. Mm -hmm. 
there was a time of very little medicine. Very little medicine. Which comes around in the beginning, they said, eat the herb, it'll help you. Then we went to take this pill, it'll help you. Now we're back to eat this herb, it'll help you. <laughs> so we just go in a circle. By having a need of finding Jesus. Okay, so we see that. So Jesus begins his public ministry here. He begins his ministry. And he begins. And he walks by the sea. And you see Peter and John. And he goes by and he said, Peter and Andrew, your brother, cast him down to the sea. And he says, Follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. The next verse doesn't even really make sense for most of us. And straightway, they left the nets and followed him. Can you imagine the power of his calling? That's right. And we have to understand the power of his calling. Huh? Amen. If you ever experience the power of his calling, huh? I go sing for me or testify for me or go take them a huh? cherry pie huh? or write them a letter huh? or give them a phone call or pray for them right now. Huh? We begin to realize there's power in his calling. Uh, then we begin to understand uh, there was power in his calling. Uh, and when he said, Come uh, and follow me, uh, I'll make you fishers of men. Uh, amen. Uh, they were cast in a net. Uh, and because they were fisher, uh, and immediately in a straight way, they left their nets and followed him. And then he going on from this, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee. And John and brother in the ship with Zebedee, the father. And I, I always thought this means something. They were mending. They're nets. There's a can for casting I preached years ago and a time for mending. Mm -hmm. Sometime we come into the house of God we uh -huh. need mending. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. Sometimes we come to the house of God uh, and we need the hold, we need the hurts, uh, and we need the pain, uh, and we need the sorrow, uh, and we need the non understanding, uh, and we need all these things, uh, and we need men to, uh, we need someone to put their heart around about us. Uh, amen. Uh, and tell us uh, they love us, uh, uh, someone, uh, and even people that have done wrong, they absolutely have done wrong. Uh, what they need is men to, uh, amen. Uh, they don't need burned at the stake, uh, they don't need condemned. What they and he is mended. Amen. And sometimes people come in and they just need mended. I hope we can always provide a place that people are willing to mend. I, I hope we always provide an altar uh, that you can get mended at. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ specializes in forgiveness. Uh, isn't it great? Uh, he loves to forgive. Uh, amen. Uh, isn't it wonderful? And sometimes we forgive uh, out of the fact that we just have to. Uh, we don't like to. Uh, have you, uh, you remember to go back when you keep you go back that far? Are <laughs> you older ones? <laughs> Uh, we got go back a couple of years, Daniel. <laughs> for let me go back sixty or so for me. You ever get in a fight with your sibling or something, or and the parents say, "Now you tell her you're sorry." Yep, been there and done that. Oh my! And sometimes it might have took six hours to get that out of you. Huh? Or sometimes it might have took a, a little bit more. Because back then they persuaded. The persuasion was a little quicker than it is now. Yeah. <laughs> we had a big weeping willow tree in our front yard. And I know why they call it weeping willow. Huh? Amen. I wept many times because of that willow. Huh? I remember the day it got cut down. Huh? Mom said that thing's getting bugs in it. Huh? I realized we may get rid of that tree. I said, oh yeah, we got to get that out of here. I was wanting to get that weeping willow tree out of there. But you ever remember apologizing when you didn't want to? You ever remember telling, and that can happen as an adult also. It might have happened today. It might have happened yesterday. We have to say, I'm sorry. Amen. And when they have forced you to say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know what, Jesus? He loves to forgive. That's the difference sometimes in our love and his love. If your brother sin against you, forgive. How many times shall I forgive the Lord? Uh, seven? Uh, oh no, 70 times. Uh, uh, seven? Uh, hey, uh, uh, 70 times. Uh, if Jesus, but the good part about that is, uh, the good part the Lord told me one time, He said, Clarence, uh, if I require you to forgive uh, in all your flesh uh, and all the problems and all the things that you do and all the things that you face, uh, 
and the flesh having to overcome the flesh and the imperfection. Think how much I forgive. Yeah. In his perfection. I said, wow. Man, if you require me to forgive, oh my goodness, when he explained that to me, forgiveness became so a lot easier. Right? If you can do me wrong, huh? and you do me wrong for years, huh? you can walk up and say, Clarence, can you forgive me? I, I don't have to think about it. I don't have to pray about it. I don't have to do anything. I, I don't have to grimp. I don't have to do anything. I just simply say, yes, I forgive because I refuse I to let it be in my heart. I'm so glad that God forgives me. I'm so glad that He has forgiven me. And I'm so glad that He specializes and He loves to forgive. Amen. Amen. Thank you. What a blessing. Jesus loves to forgive. As children, we can always love to say I'm sorry or love to forgive. Amen. We learn very quickly to be greedy. It's the nation. Used to be when my kids I had one candy bar and you're going to divide them. Let me tell you. <laughs> the next statement going about come out of one of their mouth, he or she got a bigger piece than I did. So what I used to do, I read that, I thought, wow, I love that. I said, if I had a candy bar, I said, okay, whoever devises it, the other gets first pick. That's when they learn to measure in precision. <laughs> <laughs> that's when they learned about millimeters that's when they learned uh, about how to divide something exactly in half uh, it would take them quite a while uh, amen uh, because the other is going to get first pick uh, hey uh, what did God do us that way uh, hey, uh, we need to let others have first pick uh, we need to let others uh, amen we need to love God first uh, we need to let others second uh, uh, they're number two uh, we come down number three uh, oh isn't it great uh, that we can divide is it great uh, that we are uh, willing uh, to let you have first pick uh, if the two candy bars are, uh, amen. Of course, I've never made a candy bar I didn't like. Some of you might like better. I don't eat them anymore. I haven't had one for a long time. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's rough. <laughs> but I lived good for 50 years anyway. But it isn't love. I, every, and you all forgive me. I'll, I'll get with but I go to the grocery store, I don't laugh today. I was picking up some things yesterday. I was going to make some things too. I was picking up some celery. And I, I look at it, I glance at it. I get amused at people. I lost them. And sometimes you ladies take 10 minutes to pick up. I do. Yeah, you say I do. Me. Okay. <laughs> 10 minutes to pick out the right bunch of celery. I guarantee you walk up there blind, there's going to be very little difference in the 20 that's laying there. One of them may have one spot. One cut it out and go on, so what? <laughs> Probably going to go back in the refrigerator anyway before you go. <laughs> but we pick and we look and we pick and we look. Every time I think about that, if I find the real good, and I think, oh, I'll save life. that for the next person. We can't have that. Save that for Helen. I'll save that for Helen. <laughs> Every once I'll do that. I think, oh, that one looks good. I'll just save that and let somebody else. That's hard to do, ain't it? I get a kick out of it. I enjoy it. Hey, give them the best one. And sometimes it helps us. Yes. It helps us. So having a need and finding Jesus. So they came and they thought immediately they left the ship. Immediately they left the father. Immediately they left everything. Amen. At the end of three years, up later when Jesus went by and they didn't go by, they still uh, he said you wail me till you be and do with power from on high and they had one mind thing in mind uh, their life forever changed uh, they had a need uh, and they followed Jesus uh, and they got in do with power from on high on the day of Pentecost and they kept following Jesus yes, sir. they called him he healed all that came to him Others begin to see that. So they all, I, I say, here's a man that can heal I, in the mind that you find in the Bible. Other places you find, and all that came to him were healed. I, and then all that came were made whole. I, and I can imagine, I, I, Jesus, every once in a while, I let my imagination go that way. I, hey, I, I, what we will do today, I, but I imagine everybody always needs a touch of something. Yeah. Amen. Now, when you're really young, Daniel probably doesn't feel any part of his body right now. <laughs> he are too. Yeah. I feel my shoulder, when I think about it, I feel my shoulder blades. I feel the small of my back. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't be able to feel that. I can 
feel a lot of parts of my body just standing. When I get up, I feel a lot of parts of my body. When I was young, I felt no parts of my body. Years ago, I used to tighten up my belt real tight. And they said, why did you die? I said, boy, it felt so good when I let go. <laughs> I really felt good. And I thought, wow, boy, that's a good feeling. Hey, I, I, now it didn't feel good when I don't have pain. I, hey, I have a need of finding Jesus. I, I, they have a need uh, and they look for Jesus. Uh, we have a need to make it real simple. Uh, in John 6, uh, and he fed them. Uh, in John 6, uh, he fed them bread and he fed them all the two. Uh, and then after he fed them all, uh, they begin to follow him. Uh, in John 6, uh, he said these things, begin of verse 1. Jesus will to see it. Galilee, uh, which is in uh, Tiberias, uh, and great bother to follow him because they saw the miracles. Yeah, that's right. Amen. Which were dealing with them that were diseased. And then he fed the thousand with the five loaves and two small fishes. He fed them. Then they went after him to follow him again. The day following him, verse 22, people still on the other side of the sea saw there was no one had the boats there, save the one wherein two his disciples were entering. And then Jesus went not with his disciples into the boat, but his disciples were going away. Now the bit there came other boats to Tiberias, now unto the place where they did eat bread, after the Lord had given thanks. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum, seeking for Jesus. And when they found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when comest thou hither? And he answered, and said, Verily, verily, I said unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracle, because ye did eat of the loaves. That's right. True. We go all about the miracles. True. The Pharisees never could see the miracles. They saw someone that threatened them because he would do heal somebody on a Sunday. And they were more concerned about the Sunday, their traditions, than they were about the healing. More concerned about that than they were the person. Amen. More concerned uh, when Jesus healed the blind man in John 9. Uh, more concerned about all these things. More concerned uh, that he would come and take away their glory uh, and take away all these things. They never could see the miracle. The the the, the uh, uh, Egypt, Israel, I mean, uh, I come out of Egypt. Uh, I might have said this last night too. They never could see God. Uh, they all the Red Sea rolled back. Uh, the Egyptians, they went across on dry ground. The Egyptians drowned. Uh, they went. Uh, amen. Waters were healed. Uh, they went. Water came from the rock. Uh, and God fed them. God took care of them. He gave them manna from heaven. He gave them quail. He gave them everything. They never could see God. Uh, they just lived, lived day by day. Whatever. Every time a problem would come, they blame Moses. Yeah. Sure. Always Moses' is fault. Yeah. You're always in a bad condition when it's always somebody else's fault. Mm -hmm. Amen. And as adults, it's hard for us to take responsibility sometimes. If our kids come through the house or they set a glass on a coffee table and they knock it over and it spills, it's 100% their fault. It wasn't paying attention. They're clumsy. I told you over and over again, 100% their fault. When we do it, something caused it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, you have my attention, y'all are yelling and screaming around here. You got stuff laying off. It's always something caused. It. What we need to do when we sin is say, Lord, it's me. Amen. Amen. My brother didn't cause it. My sister didn't cause it. That's right. It's me. Amen. We need to realize that. Amen. He said, look, you don't see the, the marriage. All you see is the bread. All you see is the natural thing. So many times in life, all we can see is the natural thing. We don't see the spiritual side. We don't see the blessing. We don't see the real bread. We don't see the real man. Amen. He said, if Moses didn't give you that bread, it was my heavenly father. Amen. That gave you that bread. We need to see the real. Yeah. Blessing yeah. behind it. Yeah. We need to see the real blessings in life. And not we definitely live in a world now that we're taught that the better you are, the more God gives you. Mm -hmm. One hundred percent wrong doctrine. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. One hundred percent wrong doctrine. First of all, the Apostle Paul then apparently was not very good. <laughs> apparently Apostle Paul was not very good because he died the Paul. And as important as he was, he had to go to work to 
make a few tents and have enough money to eat. So apparently Apostle Paul, going by that theory, the Apostle Paul, amen. Uh, when John and Peter arrived to Pentecost and all the blessings that fell upon them and all the power of God that fell upon them, uh, apparently uh, they wasn't really uh, true Christians then, going by that theory, uh, because you looked at a blind man, uh, the man begging at the gay of me, uh, the crippled man, uh, and he says, silver and gold have I none. They weren't just making the excuse we use when we see someone. See right, yeah, they weren't just yeah, making an excuse. And they did something else we're always told not to do. They made eye contact. <laughs> we always told, don't, don't look, don't look. A lot easier to pass it up if you don't look. Silver and gold have I none, but such I have I give unto you. In the name of Jesus Christ, and that is a rise and walk. Amen. Amen. Walk and leave him, praising God. Amen. 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 Peter and John did not become rich by preaching the gospel. Paul did not become rich by preaching the gospel. Uh, amen. Uh, uh, so many, but when nowadays uh, we set aside the richer you are, the more uh, righteous you must be, direct uh, against the word of God. Uh, Amen. Uh, you can't tell the condition of a person's soul uh, about what kind of house they live in uh, or what kind of car uh, they live in. Uh, uh, some, most people wealthy cannot be humble right. and thankful. Right. I used to say it this way. The good thing about being poor, you can be blessed in so many ways. Thank you. Thank you. Have you all ever been to the point when you went out on the way out to the car, you said, please, Lord, let us start. Please, please, Lord, let us start. I mean, it will start a prayer life real early in the morning. You get in contact with God real early. Please, please, Lord, please let us start. And back in the days when you had 30-way oil in cold weather, we didn't have all the gray or good, whatever, Daniel. And in cold weather, your angel went something like, whoa, yeah, whoa, whoa. If you're lucky. If you're lucky. <laughs> I mean, built fires under <laughs> So they go on. Remember those days? Oh, yeah. Now, I used to always do that, and I say, now you're going to work, not going to church, because you're going to church. I probably won't start anyway, it's too cold. <laughs> Y'all get that? Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. So we've been there. We've done that. And we pray, amen. Uh, amen. We prayed uh, and we saw after God uh, in so many ways. Uh, there's so many ways we needed, uh, amen. If you're wealthy, uh, and I always say it this way, I'm going to close very shortly. Uh, if you own a bread factory, only a few special people can own the bread factory uh, and sit down with one slice of bread. Right. Now look at that. Said, Thank you, Lord, amen. for the food you give me. Amen. Mean it with all of their heart. That's right. Come on. Keep me on right. the bread factory. Let me tell you, Mom will tell you about Clarence Blackwell, the prison of World War II. He said, Y'all that said, I won't eat that or I'm not hungry. All I can tell you is, you've never been hungry. That's right. That's right. As a prisoner of Amen. war, Amen. they eat grass, they eat anything they could get. Absolutely. He said, All I can tell you, you've never been hungry. Amen. If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. Amen. 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 But we, we look and we sometimes we forget to see God. Amen. We look for the material things nowadays more than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. Everything's sure. about the material sure. thing. Everything's about the material sure. things. Hey, it's about Jesus Christ in my life. And it should be about Jesus Christ in your life. Amen. I, when I have a need, I, amen, I seek Jesus. When I don't have a need, I, I seek Jesus. And when I don't, I, when I have to have a scripture uh, to help me through the day, I, I seek Jesus. Uh, and when everything's going right, uh, I still seek Jesus. Uh, he's my friend in the daytime. Uh, he's my friend at nighttime. Uh, he's my friend in good weather and bad weather. Uh, he's my friend when I have great needs. Uh, he's my friend when I don't have so many needs. Uh, he's my my friend in every message, amen, that I have, amen, he's always my friend, I want to see King Jesus, all sickness and we close, all sickness is not healed, it's basically now they will not go in all that, and all sickness wasn't healed in those days, amen, Jesus didn't pray a general prayer, he didn't stand in the temple in Jerusalem, he didn't say, let all the world be healed, he could have, if he would have said, let all the world be healed, every disease in all the world, everybody would be healed at that very moment, amen, amen. 
He could have called more than Lazarus from the grave. Amen. 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 Sure. He wasn't limited to he one. <laughs> he raised other dead. He didn't call them from the grave. He raised others that were dead. The maid that was still at the house of young man that was on the briar on the way to be buried. Right. Amen. He could have raised who you wanted to. But Paul wasn't healed. Paul in the days of grave. Paul that prayed for those that was dead and they came back to life. Paul that touched his hand on people that was healed by the faith and the power of God. Yet Paul had a thorn in the flesh and God chose not to heal him from it. But Paul said, I'll praise him. Amen. Else I'll be exalted above major for all the the revelations uh, uh, that God has given me. Uh, uh, Paul, praise the Lord. Paul was not healed from his sickness. That's right. That's right. Amen. And also, everyone that was healed still died. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. Lazarus still died. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those that leprosy still died. Mm -hmm. Those that came in Matthew 4 still all died. Everyone that was healed by Jesus Christ died. I'm not going to argue with you whether they died of the same thing or not the same. It really doesn't make any difference. The power of death passed upon all men because of the sin of Adam and Eve. And unless God chose to take you to heaven as he did Elijah, amen. Unless he chose that, you went to death and we're all going to death. Amen. I may be healed of something. I'm going to die of something. Amen. Because death has passed upon all men. Uh, all that come. So all is not healed uh, uh, physically. Uh, everybody is not healed physically. But let me tell you something. That everybody is healed. Uh, uh, sin sick. Uh, if you're sin sick, uh, let whosoever will uh, and come and take of the water of life. Amen. Really, uh, if you're sin sick, uh, amen, you can come uh, and let you seek amen. Jesus. Uh, having a need, find Jesus. Amen. You need peace, find Jesus. Yes. Couple things I'll never pray that it be God's will. Now don't don't jump on the conclusions yet. If you come to be saved, I'll never say it's your will, Lord, save them. It is His will. I've never prayed in my life someone come to be saved. Lord, if it be your will, save them. It is His will, not willing that any should perish. You come seeking peace. I never pray, Lord, if it be your will, give them peace. It is His will. The kingdom of God is not about meat and drink, but about righteousness, and peace, and joy. That is His will. We know that's His will. Yes, amen. amen. So when we need Jesus, let's seek Him. Let's pray. Lord, we thank You. We love You. And we pray, God, we've done what You have us to do, God. And we thank You for being with us for a beautiful evening in the house of the Lord. Yes. And Lord God, we pray if there's any need, God, that they, they come forth and we will may pray together one with another. As I tell the church here lately many times, I say look beside of you, to the right, to the left, look before you and look behind you. And you're going to see in every personal life there there's been failure at one time or another. Yes. And don't let the enemy tell you you failed and you're no good anymore and nothing to happen. Everybody has failed. But God, we thank you that when we come and we repent, Lord, those sins are passed away. And we thank you, Lord, for that. And we thank you, Lord, for a loving God that loves to forgive. We thank yes. you, we love you. In thy name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.